Hi, I'm Liz Schrum for the Wisconsin Technology Council, here with WISBusiness.com, the show. Just ahead, Tom Still talks about venture capital in Wisconsin and what we can learn from a familiar Big Ten state. And Kurt Bauer, president of Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, talks about what's ahead for the state's largest business association. And now, here's the WISBusiness.com stock report for early June. Rising, training for skilled jobs in industry. 16 technical colleges in Wisconsin are sharing in a $15 million federal grant aimed at training more people for jobs in advanced manufacturing. At Black Hawk Tech in Janesville, for example, the money will help veterans and others who want to enter the college's industrial mechanics program. And falling, rent-to-own legislation. Knocked out of the state budget is a plan that opponents believed would have weakened consumer protections at rent-to-own stores. The legislature's budget committee voted 10 to 6 to strip the budget of the roundly criticized idea. And now, here's Tom Still with his Inside Wisconsin commentary. In many ways, Michigan looks a lot like Wisconsin. It shares hundreds of miles of the same Great Lakes shoreline and usually votes blue in presidential elections and red when it comes to choosing governors and members of its state legislature. It also boasts major research universities that crank out ideas. Unlike Wisconsin, however, Michigan began investing in its emerging economy years ago, even as that state's automobile manufacturing base was teetering on the edge of collapse. The success story of how Michigan has surged onto the national radar when it comes to investments in tech-based, knowledge economy companies should be instructive to Wisconsin policymakers as they prepare to vote on creating a state leverage fund. The Wisconsin Assembly is poised to vote June 6 on a bill that would create a state fund of funds seeded with $25 million in state money and built to attract twice that amount in private capital. It would invest in startups and emerging companies over time after a private manager is selected. Senate approval would also be needed before Governor Scott Walker, who earmarked the $25 million in his budget bill, could sign Assembly Bill 181 into law. Michigan offers a prime example of how such a program can, over time, revitalize entire sectors of a state's economy. Michigan jumped from less than $100 million in total venture capital investments in 2011 to $242 million in 2012. The number of individual deals in Michigan also climbed from 30 to 47 companies, and as a result, Michigan jumped more places in the national rankings, 10 spots to 15th, than any other state last year. Since 2008, nine out-of-state venture capital firms have opened offices there. Total venture capital under management in Michigan has grown to $3.7 billion, up $700 million in one year alone. Those familiar with Michigan say its venture capital surge is mainly the result of a steady, long-term bipartisan commitment to state leverage investment funds. That took place over nearly 10 years and involved both Democratic and Republican governors and legislatures. The Michigan investment over time has been more substantial than what is being considered in Wisconsin, about $210 million in two main funds, and it took place at a time when Michigan's state budget was in far worse shape than Wisconsin's budget is now. In contrast, Wisconsin has only a relative handful of venture capital funds by any description, and about one-tenth of one percent of the nation's venture capital under management in the state. Wisconsin can compete for its share of a $50 billion industry, annual angel and venture capital investments in the United States. Passing Assembly Bill 181 will help build on Wisconsin's strong foundation. After all, what does Michigan have that we don't? Thanks, Tom. I'll be right back with Kurt Bauer, president of Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce. White Hirschbeck Dudek represents companies at all stages of development and in a wide range of industries to navigate the legal challenges of regional, national, and global growth. At WHD, every stage takes center stage. Kurt Bauer, president of Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, is here with us now. Thanks for joining us, Kurt. My pleasure, Liz. The state budget debate is entering what should be its closing month. What are some of the issues you're tracking at WMC? 
Well, WMC is tracking literally scores of provisions in the budget bill. I'll mention two. One of them is permitting reform, particularly with the Department of Natural Resources. We're trying to uh, streamline the process because that'll help with economic development projects that'll create jobs. Another one that we're very pleased with is the uh, taxing reform. Uh, we're looking at uh, the possibility of, for the first time in many years, maybe decades, removing Wisconsin from the top 10 as far as the highest uh, tax states in the union. Uh, we think that there's more that needs to be done, but we think that this budget is a nice way, uh, place to start. Are there other legislative matters you hope to see passed or defeated before the floor period ends? Well, I'll mention one that uh, I, we've talked about before, and that is venture capital. And, and we're on the verge of passing a state-assisted venture capital bill that we think will help grow all sectors of the economy, but in particular the science and technology uh, sectors that have uh, major potential in this state with our major research universities, but what we're lacking right now is the seed capital necessary to get uh, the uh, discoveries from the university commercialized and in, into the uh, marketplace where we can hopefully grow more jobs. Uh, there are some uh, tort reforms that we're looking at, continuing on what we were able to do last legislative session. Uh, Two billion dollars a year are, is what Wisconsin businesses pay in legal and settlement costs. It's way too high and we've got to try and minimize the uh, exposure businesses have to frivolous lawsuits. And we're also looking at additional permitting uh, changes and regulatory relief. Uh, one example I'll give you is that in Wisconsin we have a state level uh, medical leave act that conflicts in many ways with the federal medical leave act and we are looking to harmonize the two and thereby offering a lot of regulatory relief to particularly HR professionals around the state. You're hosting a June 6th seminar in Madison on the Affordable Health Care Act. What should businesses know about this event? Well, this is the third in what we think will be at least a five-part part series for us. The Affordable Care Act is a massive piece of legislation. There's a tremendous amount of uncertainty with it. Each time we have a conference, we're trying to update uh, the business community on the progress that is being made in the rulemaking process so that they can understand the costs and the compliance aspects of the law. Uh, that's what we're going to try and do in, at this meeting here in June uh, as we've got the October 1st uh, enrollment deadline coming up. We'll have another program in the fall and then probably again one in the early part of winter as the uh, exchanges are due to, to come up in the first of the year. It's a big issue to Wisconsin businesses. In fact, our economic survey that we just got back from our membership shows that right now health care uh, concerns are the number one obstacle to growth in the state. Thanks, Kurt, and thank you for watching this edition of WISBusiness.com, the show. The show is produced by WISBusiness.com and the Wisconsin Technology Council and sponsored by BMO Harris, Whitehurst Beck Dudek, MG&E, and UW-Milwaukee. Visit our websites to read and learn more. I'm Liz Schrum of Talent Foot Executive Search. See you next time.